Hello, and welcome to Archvelda's Hacks with Archvelda and his amazing hacks. There are numerous quest items in World of Warcraft, and just a few can be taken anywhere and have interesting properties or effects. In this video, I'll be showing you how to obtain 10 of these rare, unique, secret items, some of which have never appeared before in similar videos or online. While some can simply be kept by simply not completing the quest, others require a more complex method, which you'll discover in this video. This will allow you to possess secret, rare and unique items literally no one in the game who has not seen this video will possess. The first item I'm going to show you is a very recent find of mine, and it can be obtained by doing the Moonguard quest chain of Suramar. Complete all the Moonguard quests up to the quest Lay Waste, mines. Lay Mines, and this quest will give you an item called Trap Rune, which produces an interesting glowing cabalistic symbol on the ground, and stuns some of the mobs in the immediate area, then destroys them with a powerful blast of AoE. Now there's a way to keep this item after you've done the quest. You simply destroy the item, complete the quest and then use item restoration which will allow you to keep it permanently. The item's AoE only works in the Moonguard area which is actually very useful for world quests in the zone but its visual effect works anywhere except instance PvP and it's very beautiful. The second quest item I'm going to cover is one you will find to be one of the most useful, as well as being visually spectacular. This one is Horde Only. First you'll want to head to Wormrus Temple, and fortunately there's a portal in the Chamber of the Guardian in New Dalaran that will take you directly there. From Wormrus Temple, go over to Venom Smite and find the quest giver Vicky Levine. What will you Complete require? her quest, Blighted Last Rites and then the follow-up, Let Them Not Rise. Beware. Having done that, then that find needed. Death Guard Mulder, who will be wandering around Venom Spide somewhere, and do his quest, Stealing from the Siege Smiths. And that will send you on the quest to loot the items you actually want. Return with those items to Death Guard Mulder, and then start the quest, Bombard the Balliste. And this gives you the Siegesmith Bombs, the quest item we want. Now the Siegesmith Bombs produce the largest explosion that a player can produce using any method I'm aware of in WoW. Aside from being visually spectacular, the bombs also aggro anything you throw them at. Now the bombs can also aggro mobs through walls, and this can be very useful for trash farming purposes in instances. The third item I'm going to show you is from Outland, and you can get there by taking the portal from New Dalaran to Shadrath, and then flying east to Shadowmoon Valley. And from there you'll want to go to Wildhammer Stronghold for Alliance and Shadowmoon Village for Horde. And there you'll want to pick up the quest The Hand of Gul'dan from Earthmender Sophorus, that's for Alliance, or Earthmender Splithoof for Horde. And that quest will send you to Earthmender Torog at the eponymous Hand of Gul'dan. Complete that Speak quest right. and take the quest Enraged Spirits of Air. This will give you the item Totem of Spirits. And the quest item on. produces these interesting totems with floating cabalistic symbols. And you can have as many as four up of these at the same time. The fourth item we'll be discussing is a wonderful item to add to a Transmog set and it's called the Ice Cream Cryo Cannon and both Horde and Alliance can get it. Both factions will need to go to the northwest corner of Thousand Needles and complete the quest 
The Grim Totem are coming from Carissia Moonhunter for Alliance or Kanati Greycloud for Horde. You then turn in the quest to Motega Fireman for Horde or Rendal for Alliance. You'll then receive the quest Two by Boat and this will send you by boat to Fizzle and Posig Speed Barge in the middle of Thousand Needles. You'll then need to run through the quests on the barge itself, and they are both quite quick and a lot of fun. Much as I enjoy many of the questing zones in the Cataclysm Reaper, the old vanilla Thousand Needles was one of the most unique and interesting zones, and I would take the chance to check it out if you ever play a legacy server. There was this whole Salt Flats area and a gnome goblin race taking place on a continuous basis. All of that is now underwater, though you can still find debris from the old zone at the bottom of the water. Also there's a great video by Haven Games which will allow you to explore part of the old Thousand Needles in retail and I'll link to that below. After completing the quest Circle the Wagons, er, boats, You'll be given the quest Special Delivery for Brivelthurp from Grisnak if you're Horde and Mazza Stripscrew if you're Alliance. And this will give you the quest item Ice Cream Cryo Cannon. And you can see this is an unusually large and interesting looking item and works very well with ice themed transmogs. I'm just going to show you how it looks on a large model by using my Mr. Smite disguise toy here. And you can see all the detail on the item, which is continuously animated. The fifth item I'm going to tell you about is a similar quest item which is primarily visual and this one is Alliance only. To get this item you'll need to get to Ironforge and there's a handy portal in the Greyfang Enclave in New Dalaran. From Ironforge you'll need to fly to Barum's Outpost and complete the three self-explanatory quests there till you get the quest Get to the Airfield. And that will send you to the Goldbolar Quarry, where you'll get sent to this flying machine, which will take you to Ironforge Airport. Once at Ironforge Airfield, find Commander Stonebroker and begin the quest Extinguish the Fires. And that will give you the item Firefighting Gear. And uh, that's a kind of fire extinguisher. As with the Cryo Cannon, this will stay on your character everywhere. The item's utility is unfortunately limited to the Ironforge Airport area. The sixth quest item on this list you can take out of the zone, and will surprise some of you who might know some of the older items on this list. It was first told to me by. TRG Semi, who viewers of my PvP videos will know as the author of the brilliant Freeze Macro, uh, used in a lot of my exploits. Now, this item is from the Death Knight Zarting Zone. Complete all the quests in the zone until you get the gift that keeps on giving quest from Gothic the Harvester in Death's Breach. And this will give you an item called Gift of the Harvester, which is meant to kill and raise from the dead these Scarlet Miners. Now you lose this item when you turn in the quest, so destroy it and get another one from Gothic the Harvester to complete the quest and then use the item restoration system to receive the one you destroyed in the mail. The item can then be used anywhere in the world and is essentially a toy which can be thrown. It also emits a green gas if you throw it directly at an NPC. Mm -hmm. 
The seventh quest item is unique in that it provides you with an NPC companion, and this one is Horde only. Port to Mulgore from New Dalaran. Now this is one of the things I love about exploiting. How often do you actually port to Mulgore? This is the first time I've ever done it. Uh, from Mulgore, fly east to the crossroads in the Northern Barrens. And there, complete Tonga Rune Totem's mm -hmm. quest, The Forgotten Pools. And that just requires you to swim through this stretch of water. Then return to Tonga and get his quest, A Growing Problem. And this will give you the item Tonga's Totem. And this is an item which spawns an eagle pet. Uh, this eagle is similar to, though not identical, to a non-combat pet. And can be used at the same time as a non-combat pet. Hunters who knew about this item have been using it to create a small army of avian NPCs. Since you can use this item with a bird non-combat pet, a feathered main combat pet, and a bird-shaped Haiti for beast mastery. Note that the eagle is a beast for coding purposes, and this can create some very interesting creative use of game mechanics. The eighth item is by far the most well-known item on the list. Archmage Vargoth's staff can be obtained from Area 52 in Netherstorm Outland. First, get the quest, the Archmage's staff from Ravandwia, and then complete rebuilding the staff. And that will give you the quest, Curse of the Violet Tower, and the item we are actually after. Good luck. Now the staff produces an image of a young Archmage Vargoth, and there's a lot of things you can do with it. For example, rogues can use it to shadow step to, much as a warlock uses Demonic Circle. It's very difficult to kill a rogue who knows how to use the staff and its synergy with Shadow Step. Priests can also use Prayer of Healing on the Archmage as a static target, and with this technique they can heal around corners or just use it to extend their range. These two methods are just suggestions. There are lots of other things you could do with the Archmage. If you want to have some fun with it, try using the staff at the top of a body of water, or try using it near the current Archmage Vargoth in New Dalaran. Number nine is a very similar item to the Archmage Vargoth stuff, trouble. and that's Kaleg's Image Crystal, and this is given to both priests and mages when starting the artifact quest chains for Discipline and Arcane respectively. You are actually given the same item again on the Major Order Class campaign and it is possible to have two of the crystals at the same time. Know that they don't share a cooldown. The final item is one of the most interesting, having healing properties, which makes it unique amongst the quest items in this list. What brings First port to Wormer's Temple using the Chamber of the Guardian portal as before, and then head west to the West Wind Refuge. Find a Misery Bright Hoof and complete the quests into the fold. And then Blood Oath of the Horde. Goodbye. Ah, I've been expecting you. And then you'll want to head east to complete the quest Agmar's Hammer, which is just a breadcrumb quest. Once at Agmar's Hammer, complete the quest Victory Nears. What do you need? And having done that, you'll head over to Saw Hawk Fury, the Tauren, who is standing behind this wall over well here. Met. Goodbye. Be careful. Complete his quest containing the rod, and then from the same quest giver, do the good doctor, heading over to the wonderfully named 
Dr. Sinter Malfius, who sends you over to the Emerald Dream area of Dragonblight for the quest in search of the Ruby Light. Turn that in and return to Sawhawk oh, yeah. Fury. And finally, you can now start the quest Where the Wild Things Roam and receive the item we've been working towards. The pack of vaccine you receive has a subtle visual effect, the yellow mist you see here. It is also totally unique among permanent quest items in that the yellow mist acts as an AoE heal. Indeed, though the heal is extremely weak by maximum level standards, or even the level the quest was intended for, some players have managed to make very interesting uses for this item over the years. Okay, so there's the list. I hope you had as much fun with these items as I've had over the years. If you liked the video, why not do yourself a favour and subscribe? And if you really liked it, then why not consider becoming one of my Patreon donators and getting access to my super secret forum where I post all my tricks the second I come up with them, often weeks or months before I publish them on YouTube. Thank you for watching, this has been Archbelder.